Uh, hey, welcome to this week's What Say You. Uh, I'm Brian Quinn. Sal Volcano. We're at episode 67, and we're really doing it now. We're killing it. We're really doing it now. We, we're at, we missed we're at a f- week, but but we had Radio City, so yeah, you got to give some young boys yes. living out a dream a break. That's true. Right. But we've got four podcasts up in six weeks. It's amazing. Come on. Fuck off. <laughs> uh, I have uh, no mic today, but I have a great recorder, a great Zoom recorder, so you might not notice a different quality. But if you do, I don't have to tell you. It's a bad week for this. But we're okay. Everything's looking good. Wait, January 4th and then January 11th and then January 24th and now February 6th. Basically, we have actually, excuse me. Yeah. We have four podcasts in like four and a half weeks. All right. So we're not doing too bad. No. We're doing start great. Step, maybe. We're doing great. Well, I'm going to start the episode this week with something that a fan sent into the show. Yes. Well over a year ago. Wow. It's been sitting in my house. Uh, I no longer have the letter. It's unique, so if you're still listening, you're going to know who you are. Okay. Uh, I want to say thank you. I'm sure Sal's reaction is going to be incredible. Make yourself known. Okay? Okay. So do you want to close your eyes? Yeah. Okay. This close, is great. Close your eyes. A fan made a gift to you, my friend. Oh, my God. Made a gift that I believe is going to put an end to a lot of your woes. Really? Yes. I am fucking interested right now. Okay. This is crazy. Open your eyes. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, that's hysterical! Fish, fish yeah. volcano. Swim in peace. Here we have. Oh my god! A three D printed coffin. Oh my god! That says uh, "fish swim in peace" and a tomb, a three D printed tombstone that says "here lies fish volcano swim in peace." How do you know it's three D printed? He told, me in the, he told me in the tell. letter. Yeah, yeah. You can tell as well, but that he told me in the letter. That is crazy. Yeah. That's so funny. Isn't that amazing? What do you do? You put dowels in there? He, he had two sticks in there that you put yeah. in the ground, but I don't know the fuck they are. Oh, my God. Yeah. How great is that? Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I will tell you this. Someone gave me a fish coffin. Okay. It's a wooden fish coffin. Oh, I think I remember that. It was a while back. It's yeah. it's not as custom. Right. But I have it. Uh, but I still didn't. The fish is in the <laughs> still freezer. Haven't buried the fish. No. What's crazy is. Yeah. I don't know. I gotta I gotta figure out where to bury him. He can't stay in my fridge forever. Well, now you have no reason. There's no reason not to. Yeah. There's no reason not to. Yeah. Maybe I'll just. Well, the, the head the headstone is a dead giveaway though. You know, like I have a landlord. If I start burying fucking yeah. livestock in the back, <laughs> he might be like, uh, it's not really my prop. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, I'm, I may be moving very shortly. Right. Um, and uh, presumably I'll have some property. If no. so. You move, huh? yeah. What are you Within this year, I think I'm going to move. Two. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, st- I'm looking at Staten Island. You are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, uh, what? What about the apartment? We, I don't know what we could talk about what on here. What, what do you mean? The, uh, you're, you're looking for an apartment. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, I think that that is going to happen uh, April now. Yeah. April, because we have not filmed uh, uh, from Practical Jokers <laughs> in months. And uh, we have delivery dates, and we are going to get to a place where we have to shoot essentially Every, seven days a week. Yeah. So uh, I think that that is when the apartment in Manhattan is going to come we, in useful. I don't know if this is worth it to you or not, but if yeah. you Airbnb, yeah, your place for like I think like like maybe like a week of the month. Okay. You it will pay for itself. It'll pay for itself for itself. Well, so if you I, block yourself out at, for one week yeah. and you fill that week up, you will make that rent. Really? I'm looking at the same thing right now. I think I'm going to do that because I I don't need it. I am looking for a studio apartment yeah. less than fucking $2,000 a month, right? which is a lot of money. Right. But, but that's how much it is here, though. You can't get away from that. Right. But the only thing is, though, is yeah. that people for a week will live in live your in space. House, so now you have to think about so what you- goes in there. What yeah. stays there? Usually you have you'll have your own locked room or locked closet or whatever it is. Okay, but you got to provide everything. You got to provide linens. You got they also sleep in your bed. I can't do this. This is exactly what happened. This is the roadblock I ran into. I would rather sell my Jeep on eBay, take that money, and divert it towards. The thing is, here's what I think can happen. Maybe a second job. I'm thinking this is how crazy I am. Okay. I'm thinking, do I get a second mattress 
and like swap them out. Swap them each time because you can buy those mattresses now that they talk about on Stern. We, they're we, like five hundred bucks. My we, friend bought one. They're pretty good. They're like they're awesome. We 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 advertised for them on Talent Steve Dave, and they yeah. sent us they sent us mattresses. Oh, okay. And I gave I gave I put it up at my parents' house in Pennsylvania. I yeah. said, "Could you do me? Could you hold on to this?" And you cut I, the box open, it pops, it pops out. out. Yeah. My parents one night the kids were sleeping over, and they popped the mattress open. Uh, they laid on it and they for the kids to sleep on it, and they're like, "This is amazing." They now use it as their regular mattress. Wow. They essentially stole my mattress. But uh, they're my parents, so what am I going to do? Well, you're not going to do anything. You know, I'm going to do nothing. But you could, we could do that. We could do that. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't part with two thousand dollars a month on rent for an apartment in Manhattan. I just can't do it. So I, I need a workaround of some sort, or I got to bartend the night a week. <laughs> You know, yeah. and that I would love just for the hell of it. Uh, it's got to be a beer only bar. I don't want to be making. You can't even bars at one night a week and make that rent. Would you nuts? You, you don't think that? You don't. Think you don't. You, you can't. You don't have the time. You don't. Don't start this <laughs> shit with me right now. I don't have time for it. <laughs> what you need to do is yeah, you need okay. to figure out a very easy way. Where it's like okay, the first week of the month or something like that. You're not gonna. You know, you're not gonna stay at this place. You'll you'll right. you'll travel in and out from home. Yeah. From Staten Island, just the first week of the month. Okay, and then you get your linens in there, and you you could even get someone to help manage it. I believe. Sure. Well, that's well. Look, I'm not going to. I'm probably not going to stay there seven days a week. Anyway, right. it's only like a couple, two, three nights a week. But the issue with us is we don't know the schedule till like the weekend before. Right. So you have to block a week out and say, right, this week I'm not going to be there every month. Right. Just do that for yourself, and you post the the availability online for the whole year. Right. And you let that shit fill up. Right. And that's it. And then that one week a month, you don't have access to it, but it's free. Can I see the people before I agree to rent it? Like, what are the strict... I used Airbnb once, just now when I went to uh, Miami. Okay. And uh, you don't... This is what they have to see of me. I had to make a profile with my photo, and then, like, my... Like, I think you have to hook up a a credit card. So your photo's on there. They ask for it. I mean, I mean, I guess you don't have to put it, but I gotta see. I can't. Most people's photos are on there. You could pick and choose whoever you want. They have. They also get rated from whenever whenever they use it, oh. and then they even make it slightly more personal. Like they'll say, like they'll ask. They ask me to contact the owner of mine and, and explain to him why I want to use it. What really? I'm, what I'm doing exactly? So I wrote to him I'm like, hey, I'm gonna be in Miami with my family. You know, we right. just want a couple of rooms. You know, I kind of so we had like a little dialogue. I was a first time user. Right, they hired me, but like they, they, they. But you pay up front, and it was but the place I got was not cheap. Right. So I mean, what, what gripes are they going to have? I'm pay, paying these guys thousands of dollars right. for a week. You know? And you didn't get in there and, and like smear feces on the wall or stuff like that. Well, I, just, I did, but that was besides. Yeah. I, okay. You know, you, See, that's you won't hear you won't hear none of that in the ratings. Uh, right. Because <laughs> I, I now I, I what right. I did was I, 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 I. Uh, took that account off and I opened up a new account. That's oh, what I do I now on Airbnb. I, I open an account and I shit and smear it smear everywhere it in the place the and then I change that account and I open a new account. So they'll never see me coming or okay. going. Or well, going. see, I'm worried about running into someone like you. Yeah. Well, we're, we're out there. One, I, I'm torn because I would think that I would probably just want to select women because they're a little bit cleaner than guys. I think that yeah. is very naive of you. Talk to a woman yeah. about the women's restrooms in their places of business or in public. Yeah, but I see. And they'll men's tell you. Rooms. Yeah, but you don't see women's, and I think they're very similar to men's, if not worse. So I've heard on the streets. Really? Yep. Well, my concern is just like, and I apologize up front to women in the audience. Uh, call me naive. Call you know, call me uh, uninformed. Just don't call me sexist. I'm just a guy asking questions. But do I want a woman on her period sleeping in my 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 bed? Okay, I don't want any woman. I don't want any man on the period or not on the period right. sleeping in my bed. So it doesn't. Even, it ends way before that. I okay. say, do I want another human sleeping in my bed? The answer is absolutely right. Not. But if you're renting out your apartment, here's what I think you can do. Yeah, I think that you can get a mattress topper. Okay, for when they're in town, I just throw it on top. You get, and then what you do is there's also one of those like zipper encasements for like bed bugs. Uh huh. So I think what you do is when you're leaving, Zip you put the mattress topper on, then seal that shit up, right. and then put – like I would even put a fucking – another layer of something over it, okay. and then another thing. And then you also have their their blanket, their sheets, right. their whatnots. 
you know, you got a little maintenance to do. You come home, you got to take all that shit off, stow it away, clean sure. it, clean it. Right. You know, you got to do that. But you, I mean, if 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 you get the right, you know, the right formula in there, you're really not paying for the apartment if you do it right. I think I'm going to try that. What you're saying right now? Yeah, I, I, I you know, which means for 25 percent of the calendar year, to, if if it fills up, someone will be living in your home. Sure. Well, it's not really my it's, home. It's your it's, pied. De, what do they call that? A pied de te? What is this? It's like a. It's it's a French word that means like it's it's like you have a small living space in a city that you visit, visit once in a while. Uh, I'm still eating freedom fries, bro. I don't fuck with the French. I'll tell you right now. Why. Wait, yeah, but. All right. So what you're saying, like I put a side piece up there? Well, I got to get a main piece first. Wait, hold on. I got <laughs> I put a piece there? Yeah. Hold okay. On. I'll tell you right now. All right. Okay, Google. All right. <laughs> What's the French word for when you have a small apartment in a city that you visit every once in a while? Uh, if this comes back with it, it's going to be amazing. Renting an apartment in Paris. It's, Isn't it it's, incredible? It's a, it's a Pierre day. You asked your phone a question. It came back with information on how to rent an apartment in France without you moving a finger, and we're still considering it a failure. It was it's a, still it's not doing what it was failure. supposed to do. Pierre, on the, on the upside, you could rent an apartment in Paris. Pierre de Tet, I think it's called. Pierre de Tet. Okay. P- <laughs> Pierre de Tet. <laughs> A Pierre de Tet. Something like this. Yeah, yeah. When was the last time you heard the term Lucky Pierre? Like, look at this Lucky Pierre over here. Does that have to do with uh, gay? I don't know. That's a gay term. Well, I, Is it? No, oh, that maybe I'll not originally, up. but it was co-opted to mean Let's a gay. See Siri. Let's see if yeah. Siri's got this one. Who is Lucky Pierre? Okay, check it out. The Adventures of Lucky Pierre... Is a 1961 nudie cutie film created by exploitation filmmakers Hirsch and Gordon Lewis and David Friedman. First of his kind. All right. So he's, Lucky he's, Pierre is the opposite of gay. It looks like he's just getting posts left and right. No, no, no. But it was co opted by the gay community. I know this because Jay Miller had a show called Lucky Pierre <laughs> weekly at my bar. And it had, he said that it, it's something like when there's like a bunch of gay dudes having sex in a row. Like the Lucky Are you Pierre, sure this isn't just the Jay Lucky Miller? Pierre is the guy in the middle. <laughs> <Something> <laughs> <like that. laughs> uh,. Oh, well, hold on a second. It could be any combination, according to Ur- Urban Dictionary. Um, <laughs> Lucky Pierre, the middleman in a three-way buttfuck, also known as the French sandwich. <laughs> and here is the uh, Urban Dictionary sentence that they use it in. You know how they provide a sentence? <laughs> as the black balls were slapping off his quivering ass, Pierre thought to himself, you're so lucky, Pierre. <laughs> Uh, but other people are saying it could be any any combination of three people. Just the first person has to be in the middle, and his name is is he's the lucky Pierre. Okay. <laughs> well, well, you lucky Pierre, you. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that in so fucking long. I didn't realize like J Mill had a storied history with yeah. it. All right. Oh Pierre de de. Ter. Oh Pierre de Terre. Pierre de Terre. Pied a uh, Pronounced pied a uh, is a small living unit usually located in a large city some distance away from the individual's primary residence. Okay. Uh, it's an apartment flat or condominium. A condominium. A pied, a pied de terre. So the name of this episode is definitely Lucky Pierre's Pierre de Terre, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, I'm getting – all right. So – so you think if I if I really button up that mattress and no blood will get to that mattress? Well, I'll tell you what. Because uh, if I ever come home to that, yeah, I probably yeah. won't. I like I will never you just go set back the building on fire. <laughs> never go back there. Like, <laughs> I mean, there's no way. I think you know, I think what happens is, and I'm pretty sure they they have something that works in tandem. But I think Airbnb have like a cleaning service. Yes. Yes, because think about it. Think about it. Who wants to do that? You know, no like, one. I'm pretty sure that that's what happens, bud. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I think that I'm going to try and get one of those. If the you got to think of it like this. Go ahead. We sleep in hotels all the time. It's yeah, the exact same. Thing. I know. I know. You're right. 
Exactly. You're right, except the hotel, you don't know how many fucking people are staying there. With with my Pierre de Pierre de Tay. Pierre, Pierre de Tay. At most there's twelve people. Right. If there's a single person, you know what I mean? Right. If there maybe 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 twenty four people. Right. You know. And so, you know, if 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 they're just horrible, you just fucking you, you I, just I'll, them. I'll tear up a new fucking asshole. You put on there what they did and you know, I want to see pictures of them. I got a visual. People are doing this all over. It's like a very, like, I mean, I think maybe we need to jump on this. All right. But why, if this is the way it is, why doesn't everybody have one of these in Manhattan? Uh, Why why isn't everybody making money on the side? Like, I'll rent this for two grand a month and I'm going to rent it out four days a week. You think buildings have a code against it? Well, let me think about this. I don't know. Maybe maybe you're going to have an issue doing it if you're a rental. You maybe right. keep that away from the homeowners association. If you're not an owner and you're mm. a renter renting out someone else's, that's like a double. Right. Th- there might be some shit there. I don't know. All right. I don't know how we got it. Oh, so the fish. All right. So the point being, when I buy, I would let you bury it in the yard of my current house, but I'm not going to be there much right. longer. Right. So I don't want your fish living. For those there. who don't know, I had a fish that died. Oh, right. about- we didn't explain this. <laughs> I had a fish for like six years, my second longest running fish that died about five years ago. And I didn't want to flush him because I felt it was inhumane. And I didn't want to bury him in the yard because it was the summer when he died. And I didn't want it to like decompose and smell and stuff like that. And I didn't know what to do. And so I put him in tinfoil and put him in my freezer and he's been there for five years. He has no name. I call him fish because throughout my life, whenever I named the fish, it died. Didn't name the fish. I called him fish, and he lived for five, Look, six years. It's a pretty long time for fish. Yeah. So it is what it is. Should we open Should we open it up and look at him? I don't think you want to do that. You're going to get emotional. Oh, so you're thinking I just put him right from the tinfoil, frozen right in there, and right under. I don't open it. I, I think that if you try to open the tinfoil at this point, it would tear him apart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I just consider that his burial shroud. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In my head, I was like taking him out of the tinfoil, mm. but there's no need for that. I don't think there's a need for that. Yeah. Okay. This is cool. Yeah, there's something else. This guy, you know, maybe if he contacts me, maybe there's a market for these. I think there is. Q's coffins. Wait, wait. All of a sudden, you took it away and you just made a Q's coffin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take away from the person who also gave me a coffin for the fish a while back. Yeah. But now I have two coffins. <laughs> could that could that other coffin fit in this coffin? Double cough? Yeah. Right, right there. I could check. That's what the fucking Egyptians used to do. Oh, Sarcophagi. guys. Yeah. Let me see. It's right here. Yeah. I mean, we're solving all sorts of problems over here. You can buy a Q's coffin <laughs> at no. Q's coffin. What? No. Okay. You can't just take ideas and then just put Q in front of it. Just- <laughs> no, no way. That's a fun- <laughs> That's a good call. Actually, you know what? I might. No. No, they're the exact same size. Um... I don't know to tell you. You got a choice ahead of you. I mean, I could buy another fish and wait it out. <laughs> should we have like a? No, I don't want. To, I don't want to disrespect it. What? So like, should we have a proper, like a proper funeral? Well, I would be more interested in having like a wake. Right, that's what I meant. Yeah, like a wake. Like how getting a bar like one a, night, like a cold cup platter. And- like we get the coffin and put it like on on like a little dais and like put a picture of a goldfish behind it. Everybody can pay their respects. But who's going to pay respects? I'm the only one who shared anything with that thing. I don't know. People like alcohol. So if you have it in a bar, people will just show up. Can we do something around it so it's not just the wake of the fish? Like what? What happens at a wake? Like there's a viewing. It's two to four, seven to nine in between to come back to your apartment for, for like for ham. Yeah. You know, like club soda. And have you ever skipped a funeral awake that you know you should have been at? I'm sure I have. Yeah. Not probably out of... You know, like, not because I was like, fuck this or anything like that. Probably because I was tired. I couldn't get there. Or 
<laughs> being tired. No, is, no, I don't mean kind of t- like saying no, 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 I, don't, I don't mean like tired. Like I was home, like and, I, and there was chips all over my shirt, and I was watching like Nickelodeon. I just mean like, like I just mean like I was like I couldn't get there. Like I was dead. God, I was burning the candle at both ends. Right, you know yeah. what I mean? And you just like you know, there's no way I can get there in time. If I get there, I'll be there for ten minutes before it's over, and like that kind of thing. Right. I generally try to you know make but people die so much it's like hard to man as we get older they're dying more and more man yeah. what are you gonna do I'm not I don't no, I guess no one's a fan of wakes <laughs> I'm not a fan <laughs> um, I've been to fun wakes like the Irish I, I know it's a cliche but they really yeah. they really infuse alcohol into into yeah. wakes you know Italians it's just a fucking horrible yeah, people throwing themselves on the fucking yeah. cough, and I, I can't stand it. It is them. funny how that's like kind of accurate, even though it's a stereotype. Yeah, right? I, I growing up in on the Italian side of the family and an Irish side of the family, it is a one hundred percent accurate. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, the Italians they don't. You ever wonder what your wake's gonna be like? I do. Whew. I think about it all the time. What do you, think what do you who, come up with? Who's attending? What would be said? Right. You know what the burial is gonna be like. Ooh, I guess it depends on the age that the you spread. die. You want to be buried? I do. Yeah. Yeah. You want that body rotting. When I say spread, I mean like like the food. Yeah, like, the, the cold cuts yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Really? I wonder about that. Like you're just going to let your body just – your 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 body just lie in the cold earth and rot? Yeah, but the other thing is I'm going to light my body on fire and burn it to ashes. I don't – I'm not too fond of that either. I got to be honest – Honestly, I really mean this. If I could be something how preserved, like a like a like a taxidermy, yeah, and like you could sit me on the couch, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I would really do it. I mentioned that, and everyone seems to think it's like too creepy, but it's pretty creepy. If you practice. could do it where the eyes aren't dead, like dead eyes Ooh. behind, if you don't, if they don't look like soulless eyes, right? Like if you basically looked exactly like the Madame Tussauds wax figure. But those are, I think those are creepy. Are they? No? Not all of them. <sighs> it, if you could be preserved right. in a way that, I mean, looked, you know how sometimes people take pictures with those Madame Tussauds? Yeah. And like for a split second, you're just like, oh shit. Yeah, they met yeah. Samuel L. Jackson today. That's yes. cool. Right, right. If you could look that good and be that well preserved, like just sitting on the couch like watching TV. But what's the end result of that? Well, the, person, like the, person, is, the okay. person's image and likeness is still around you? No, no, no. The person's image and likeness is not still around you. The person's corpse is still around you. Right. The Right. Yeah, but if it's a, that A well picture on the wall is going to do the image and likeness. No, because it is your actual body, though. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's fucking like there's just – it's going to be cold. To the t- Who's going to touch it? Like what is the, what is the person – No, I'm talking about like – you're talking about like how the way they're in the way that they're embalmed now. I mean, like if it could be and look like the wax figure, where it's like not cold mm. and weird and stuff. Like it's like mm. I don't know. For that matter, I guess you could just get a wax figure made of you. But then, then it's not the actual person. Look, this could be very, very weird. It probably is. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Like, no, I, let's talk it out. I like it. I uh, my. My uh, two options were always I'm going to get cremated. Right. Because that just to me seems to be the way to go. Or you ever hear that company Alcor? No. Is it Alcor? Alcor. Where it's cryogenic freezing. They just they just freeze you. So what does that do? Well, that do is – Do you not decompose? Do you get frostbite? Do you look like a block of ice? What do you, what do you look like? Uh, I don't know what they, they – what they show it like, like it's it's. I know this. Let me look about. Hold on, ready? So I, I just went to look and, and got distracted by something. Hold on a second here. Okay, Google. What percentage of people are cryogenically frozen? Nice. Alcor, you're right. By the way, life Alcor. Extension. I've looked the it up. Cost of cryonics. Right. No, but the way I've done research, I'm, 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 I've done research on this. What you do is you get a life insurance policy, and then you make Alcor your your recipient, and that pays for your your treatment. That's I'm, the way I'm that they do it. This. And there's two ways you could do Look at it. This general questions, technical questions, get ethical questions, spiritual questions, financial questions. Yeah. 
misinformed. Oh, this is amazing. And oh. the technology has co- – here's the problem. They can freeze you. They can't unfreeze you. That's the issue right now. Right. The idea is that they're going to freeze you and then in the future long enough, they're going to figure out – Yo, that is insane. The way to freeze you. That is insane. I'm going to take even a step one further now. Because what if I, you get unfrozen 200 years from now? Dude. Will you, want to, will you be fascinated or will you want to commit suicide? There's a, no there, one you know is alive. There's a, a comic book called Transmetropolitan, which is fucking amazing. And it takes place in, a, in an unspecified yet distant, distant future. And there's a character in yeah, it. Not too distant future. No, no, pretty distant. Pretty, okay, it's okay. way futuristic. Flying cars, okay. other planets, shit like that. And there are, there's this woman who is unfrozen and reconstructed and brought back to life. And they're literally like, they, they, they're an, they're an annoyance. These people, they just throw her out onto the streets, and she basically loses her mind for a while because she can't deal with everything that's going on. And they're seen as second class citizens. There's like a derogative word for them. And then even more fucked up than that is she died, was frozen. Her husband died, was too far away from the center to be frozen. So he just died. So when she woke up expecting her husband to be there with her, he wasn't there. It was like a really powerful issue. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty good. But, um, so cryonics from the Greek. Cryos, meaning icy cold, Mm -hmm. is the low temperature preservation of humans who can no longer be sustained by contemporary medicine in the expectation they can be healed and resuscitated in the future using more advanced medical technologies. Um, Cryo preservation of people is not reversible with current technology and it's today only practiced following legal death. The rationale for cryonics is that current medical and legal definitions of death are inaccurate. And that cryopreserved patients who do not meet the more stringent information theoretic definition of death retain sufficient biological and neurological structure to be restored to full physical and mental health using advanced future technologies. Mm-hmm. Has anyone ever been revived? No adult human has ever been revived from temperatures far below freezing. Cryonics patients are cared for in the expectation that future technology, especially molecular nanotechnology, will be available to reverse damage associated with the cryonics process. Aren't cryonics patients dead? A person who can be resuscitated is not dead. Mm. Therefore, if cryonics patients are preserved well enough that they might someday be resuscitated, then they aren't dead. They are cryopreserved. Before cryonics procedures can begin under present law, a patient must be legally dead. Legal death means that a qualified authority has determined that further care or resuscitation is not appropriate, usually after determining that heartbeat and breathing, and in some case brain activity, have ceased. Legal death is a legal fiction, not to be confused with reality. A legally dead sailor who was lost at sea yet finally returns home is not actually dead. Given the gulf between today's medical technology and the expected capabilities of future medical technology, the gap between law and reality is likely to persist. Under ideal conditions, cryonics procedures can begin moments after the heart stops beating. Blood circulation and breathing can be artificially restored, keeping cells of the brain and body alive and functioning during the early stages of cryopreservation. Cryonics may also be performed after long periods of legal death while retaining the possibility of future repair. How soon after the heart stops must cryonics begin? Cryonics procedures should ideally begin within the first one or two minutes after mm-hmm. the heart stops. So these people are just like on call? Yeah. They're on call. Really? It's yeah. like, all right, he's going to die. Get over here. Right. Oh, that is crazy yeah. because it really like then what's happening there? Like let's say you have someone you love that's going to be cryogenically frozen. Right. Like, all right, they're about to die. I love you. I love you. Bye. Bye. And then they come over and they literally like start preserving them and you're like, this is so weird. Like am yeah. I accepting their death? Or am I not? Like what a weird thing. It's a it's a bizarre thing. And, and, and like the – one of the most interesting things I've ever seen in my life was – just showing how freezing technology has advanced. Like they, they'll show you some of the first people that were frozen and the ice is like, is like white and you can't see. And it just looks like, like if you keep something in your freezer for too long. Whereas now they have <coughs> like freezing fr- technology that you look at it and it is, cr- it's like looking through glass. It's crystal clear. So even just a method of freezing has gotten better. It's, it's, it's really fascinating, man. Wow. It's fascinating. You know, Ted Williams. Yeah, they his say his head. That. Yeah, his head is it's uh, he's with Alcor. 
Is he really? Yeah. Well, now, what is that? What is just his head? They feel they're connected to another body? They feel they'll be able to clone you in another body or, or attach the head or take the brain and put it in another body is what, is what the, the idea behind that is. It, but he had the wherewithal to do this back then? Yeah. He's like, fuck this shit. He's like, I'm going to fucking you play ball again. Imagine your brain is in someone else's body. That's like straight up Well, I think the shit. idea is they clone a new body for you. Right. Oh yeah, we didn't we have Ted Williams on like episode three of the pod, Junior? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I talked about <laughs> did, were you, were, didn't they bring him back and his head was on a hot broad? Yeah. And that was the idea as if you were going to have sex with that right. Ted Williams. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that one. Longer delays place a greater burden yeah. on future technology to reverse it. Uh, so that's a good option for me, I think. Is the yeah? This is so fascinating to me. Is the preservation process fatal? Cold preservation is not yet reversible with present technology, but this says nothing about the abilities of future. What is fatal varies from place to place. When will patients be revived? That depends on when they acquire preserved the specific. Deal. But who's keeping like counts on these people? <laughs> They're the company. They have a warehouse. With, like, bodies in them. And who's keeping counts on the people that work at Alcor, though? Well... Like, once I die, and then the people around me that don't have... Uh, aren't getting cryogenically frozen. Right. Like, if I'm the only one of my friends that gets cryogenically frozen, and then right. in a hundred years, those people are gone. Right. Unless, like, you know, my great-great-great-grandkids are, like, told, make sure you go visit Grandpa, make sure Alcor does what they're supposed to. Right. Then who's keeping tabs on Alcor? Is it government regulated? I don't know. I mean, you have a contract with them, so I don't know, dude. We should. Why don't we get Alcor on the show? Why don't we get an Alcor representative on the show? Could we? Is Alcor on Twitter? I don't know. Here we go. Let's get it. We haven't done this in a while. Cryonics technology is always improving. It's better now than it was in 2000, which is better than it was in 1990, which in turn was much better than the crude methods used in first chronic patients in the 1960s. Eventually, a time will come when human suspended animation will be perfected. In other words, it will be possibly to ret- it will be possible to routinely turn people off and on for medical time travel, space travel, and other purposes. I mean, that's unbelievable. That is insane. As progress continues, it will then become possible to recover people preserved at earlier times with less perfect methods and greater degrees of injury. It doesn't look like they're they're on. They're on Twitter, but they are on Facebook. Really? So if somebody out there... Some think it will take centuries before patients can be revived, while others think the accelerating pace of technological change might so rapidly transform our world that decades would suffice. Dude, they have a YouTube channel. Really? With, With commercials for it. This is fucking unbelievable. We have to get this. We have to get someone from Alcor in here. We got to do it. Alcor. All right. So, guys, because I know I, there's no way anybody listening to this is not like, I want to know more about this, right? Yeah. I, come on. Look at this one. Ready? Good. Um, what about aging and disease? There's no point in prolonging life if the result will be illness and debilitation. People are now living longer, healthier lives than their grandparents, and their children will live longer still. Eventually, aging itself will be treatable. Re- will be a treatable, reversible condition. Dude, why? As medicine attains full control of the human body at the molecular level, by the time it becomes possible to revive cryonics patients, especially today's, biological aging as we know it today will not exist. In the 19th century, 30% of people living in Paris died of consumption. Today, almost no one in the industrialized world even knows what consumption is. Right. <clears throat> If cryonics works for me, won't all my friends and relatives be dead? Oh. This depends on many factors, including when you are cryopreserved, how long you spend in cryopreservation, how long it takes to develop life extending technologies, and whether your friends or family are themselves treated. Wow. What is the evidence? Okay. What, Does are you willing to take that, that step knowing you'll never see any of your families again, family or friends again? Well, that's the thing. It's like, what am I buying into? Well, you're going to make new friends. You're gonna you're gonna make new family. I mean, what if you meet your great 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 grandson? Is that not family, Sal? Oh, that's crazy talk. You know? Well, I'll tell you what. If let's say the it was here and now, right? And my great 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 grandfather was unfrozen. How 
fucking amazing with that book. Amazing, but also now I got this guy fucking mooching off me. Just, just what? Who's he going to live with? Me? How's he going to get a job? How's he going to get money? Oof. Uh, Airbnb. <laughs> I mean, look, for all you know, he's my relative. He's sure. direct. I'm a direct descendant of him. Right. I want to know his stories. I already have an affinity to the guy, of course. Sure. But, for, but for all purposes, he's also a stranger. So he comes back to life. I'm the only family he has down the line. Right. He comes and what's he want to do? What's he want to fucking? What do you want? What do you want me to do? Is he I, need rides everywhere. My initial, <laughs> my initial thing is like, w- 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 like, all right, look, look, they, like, look, they, they, they unfreeze right. him, right? He literally gets unfrozen. He's in Alcor Central, right? Then he's just like, what's the name? Do you, you have do you, clothes? Do you know the name of your great, 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 great grandfather? Or no, nah, I can probably only go up like till great grandpa, unfortunately. I actually wrote it all down once. I started asking my my grandparents these questions because right. I wanted to have like an or, like an actual oral history of my family. Yeah. So I recorded my grandpa like telling me and stuff, but I can't remember, which is an absolute shame. Yeah. But apparently, I'm eight percent black. I believe that. I told you that because we took those <laughs> DNA tests and it came back and said, I was, "Oh, that's I was eight percent right. African American." Yeah. You you are eight percent African American. I don't know what that even means. That's pretty crazy because only thirteen percent of the United States population is black. So really, those numbers I don't know what they mean. But, <laughs> but if you think about it, like think about all that the African American, the black community has contributed to the United States of America with only thirteen percent. Correct. You have eight percent of that in you. So what is that contributing you to you? Right. You can dance. That's right. <laughs> I've seen you. You can dance. You got good taste in music. Uh, yeah, a little bit you of rhythm. I mean? A little bit of rhythm. Yeah. Uh, my, but, but not to not to get too far away from you. You're this. funny. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You got a great head of hair. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Who knows where any of this is coming from? I don't I'm going to just assume it's all from the from the African <laughs> lineage, man. I want to know who's African American. Like, where does that even come from? Because, like, well, African. No, I mean in my family. Like, where, oh, okay. where did it where did it come from? I don't know, and I don't know how accurate. I mean, all I did was spit in a tube. I mean, I don't know. I think it's pretty accurate, though. Really? Yeah. Did you? Because you go online and you look at it, it literally tells you, it tells you the regions you're from and right. stuff. Right. I mean, I don't know if that's a scam. It was ninety nine bucks. Well, right. Like, imagine ninety nine dollars after forty years told me that I'm eight percent black, and I wouldn't even know that. That's invaluable information. But I want to know my roots. Doesn't it all change how you feel about yourself, right? Like you're not. No, I don't even. I don't even really know what to make of it. I don't know if yeah, it's accurate yeah. or not. But I did want to know. Like that eight percent means eventually, like probably a one hundred percent black per- African American person was in my family at some point. Yes. And that just got – it gets watered down and watered down. Well, you know? you're, you're – what? Second generation American? Yeah. So who the fuck knows what, what that's going on? Yeah. Like I could trace my family to two countries. You know what I mean? Right. You're all over the fucking map. Yeah. No. I could chase – no. I could – it's four countries I'm from. Okay. That I thought – I mean next level up. Sure. Like my dad is 100% Italian. Right. And my mom is a mixture of Cuban – Puerto Rican and Spanish. Right. So whatever. I don't know. Oof. There's a lot. I mean, the Italians kept themselves. I don't think you're going to get a black. Right. You know how the Italian feels about black people. Like it's not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that extends you ever seen back Good to Fellas? Europe hundreds of years ago. <laughs> I think it more than anything goes back <laughs> to Europe hundreds of years ago. Yeah. So uh, you got to figure it's in the it's in the other the other. Yeah, I don't know. The other side of the family. But my great 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 grandfather gets unfrozen. Okay. Right. He's black. No, sure. Whatever. I don't know. But like, wh- wh- like, are they like, well, we have sneakers for you and cab fare, and then like, w- like, uh, t- like coming out of prison. I like, think so. Like he, like he, they're like, this is Alcor. You're in, uh, you're in this city. He's a pair of sweatpants. This right. is according to your contract. Here is five hundred dollars. Right. And you know when you leave here, you know you got to be careful for the flying cars. Right. And then I guess this is a contact number. You know, to someone they probably give you like a like a counselor. I don't know. You got, a- to, you got to have. You got to yeah. cover these bases. You can't bring someone back to life three hundred years from now and then like be like kick him in the ass and be like, hey, take it easy. Right. Okay. Well, in this comic book, Warren Ellis, who's a, who's a brilliant comic book writer, they had like um, they had like uh, dormitories for him, but they were just shit bunk beds. They were like homeless shelters. And they were That's just living in there. Man, we gotta talk to someone from this place. Yeah, we gotta get out. How here. much does Cryonics cost? You want to take a stab? Yes. 
Most people, I will, I will stop when it gets to the number. Okay. Most people pay for chronics with life insurance. You were right about that. Yeah. Since the actual cost of it depends on your age and health, to find out your specific costs, you would need to shop for life insurance. Alcor offers two options. For whole body pre- preservation, you would need a minimum policy of blank. And for neural preservation, you need a minimum policy of blank. Other funding options are available besides life insurance, including trusts, annuities, prepaid cash, or equivalents. So you want to take a stab? Uh, I guess. I, I did know these numbers once upon a time. I don't think that it's prohibitively expensive. It doesn't seem to be. Like, I think you're talking like six-figure range, right? Yep. For a full body? Yep. 200000 Right. A minimum policy of. And right. just the brain is eighty thousand. I eighty thousand was the exact number I had in my head for the brain. But let's remember, I did research this a couple of years back. That's probably why it's in there. Uh, yeah, it seems worth it. Put it this way: Why wouldn't you do it? Like, what are you doing? Like, all all you're doing by not doing it is ensuring that you're dead. Like, if you do this, like you have a shot at com- you. You have a legit shot at coming back, right? You know. I I they gave me the stats here of how okay. many people have done it. What do you got? Alcor membership statistics. Members are people who have completed full legal and financial arrangements for cryopreservation. preservation. Okay. Uh legal and financial arrangements. So I guess that's not as to say how many are frozen. Sure. This these numbers very much surprised me. Really? Very much. Because well, of how high they are or how low they are. I don't want to say. I want you to play the game. Okay. I in the in the thousands, I would say. Okay. Not not. I mean, I mean, less than six figures. I want to say. Oh wait. Oh, sorry. It gives the number of total members signed up, and the number of people that are actually frozen. Really? Yes. I want to say like the number of people frozen like two thousand around there. Uh, lower. Lower. Yeah. Total members. Okay. 1,060. Not frozen. Of Earth, of 7 billion people. Not frozen. Total members. Total patients, which I believe would indicate that they're fucking froze. And frozen. Let it go, let it go. 144 people. Wow. That is fucking crazy. Do you think most people just think it's a scam? 100. Oh, I shouldn't have said it. How many think you, a male and female, do you think? Uh, I mean, I think it's a, it's a more of a male centric yeah. thing by far. One hundred and four male, okay. thirty nine female. They have a question here: Why aren't there more people? And they the first sentence is it's an under, it's not a traditional thing, right? Uh, below our graph showing the number of alcohol members and patients at year end since inception. So they started in what looks like nineteen seventy two ish. They they go up about. Well, let's see. We're in 2015, so you, you're at 30, 45 years. So at a thousand members, yeah, I mean you're only you're going up. It's a pretty it's a pretty steady. Sure, like I, it doesn't it. It's consistently steady as long as you could determine that it's not a scam, right? Through through proper research and talking to them and stuff like that. That's what I'm saying. There has to be some government regulation. Where they can't just be like, they have to have their ducks in a row. You can't just be taking money from people and freezing them and being like, all right, we got you. <laughs> Could they bring Fish Volcano back <laughs> in 300 years from now? Uh, wow. Why haven't more people signed up? People don't sign up for chronics because it's not traditional. They're skeptical of anything they haven't seen work. It costs money. They're afraid of what their friends might think. They live in denial of their own death. They don't want to think about the subject. They procrastinate. They don't like, they don't like life well enough to want more of it. They're afraid of the future in which they may be alienated from friends and family and other social environments. Typical Alcoa members. If any alcohol members could be called typical, tend to be highly educated, independent-minded people who enjoy life and think cryonics has see a what they're doing chance there, right? of. You see what they're doing right there. They pay for it with life insurance and think the future is likely to work out pretty well. They often have friends or relatives who are also alcohol members. They expect alcohol to revive them using nano medicine and expect to continue their lives with as much passion and joy as today, only with much more amazing technology. Well, the future is bright. 
Could you they, imagine they that? Under, they operate under certain laws. You wake up 300 years from now. Like Alcor is bringing you back, right? Then they bring back the, the person next to you and out steps in full bow tie regalia, James Murray. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What a fate. <laughs> First thing he wants to do is get the fucking gang back together, buddy. You and him. <laughs> he immediately stuffs on my shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he starts chewing his first meal, mouth open, just like <laughs> wet, slapping lips. <laughs> it wouldn't bother me. I, it would be to- it would be like as if you were thrown into a future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm immediately like going like this to the alcohol people. I'm not here. Uh <laughs> Why did you choose the name Alcor? Linda and Fred Chamberlain. Okay. In September 1970, Linda and Fred Chamberlain, the founders of Alcor, oh, husband and wife team, Ooh. were asked to come up with a name for a rescue team for the now defunct Chronic Society of California, CSC. They believed that people would someday travel to the stars. So they searched through star catalogs and astronomy books, hoping to find a star that could serve as a cryonics acronym. Alcor, comma, AD Ursae Majoris was precisely what they have been looking for. It is a dim fifth magnitude star near the bright star Mizar. Mm. It roughly fit the acronym Allopathic Cryogenic Rescue, allop- allop- allopathy, as opposed to homeopathy, home- homeopathy, is a medical perspective wherein any treatment which improves the prognosis is valid. Alcor has been used for centuries as a test for good eyesight. Oh, the star itself. If you can see Alcor, you have excellent focus and vision. Do I, I will tell you this is a pretty um, comprehensive Q, FAQ. Yeah, they got shit down. I I skipped a lot of it, but we we should. I would really love to get some. I mean, I feel like we have a lot of the answers. Yeah, but I would love to talk to someone who like can tell us right. Like, what's it like? What, like, are these people? Is it like a morgue? Are they just like in these? Oh, like, I've seen them. They look like you know, like um, you know, like old revolvers on guns. Like, yeah. Bzzz, yeah. Like take that out, put it on its side, and it's basically like these steel cylinders with like the the, the tubes around it, and they they put you in the tube. Are these people that are frozen always visible? No, they're steel steel tubes. Oh, so you don't? They don't see them at all. No, they don't see them at all. Uh huh. It's a very sterile environment. I think there's valve, there's like valves and pet cocks to refill the liquid nitrogen because over so time. What I'm, what I'm thinking is, that. what is the oper like? So what are Alcor operations? So the, the, so for, after 45 years, yeah, and a hundred and a thousand sixty six members, right? right? So you're talking about only 144 have been preserved. Which means those other ones might have like some type of down, not down payment, but like a premium, you know, like a, they might be, they might be getting some, are they, if they're not paid at all until someone's dead and preserved, then they're working off the income of 144 bodies that started in the seventies when it wasn't a couple of hundred thousand dollars. So this is a very, very, very small company. This is like not a. This is probably not even a multi, multi, multi million dollar company. Probably not. So I wonder how many people are on the staff at Alcor, and like, and basically, a lot of. So they have to be allocating resources to two places. One is, well, preservation of bodies. Well, sure. Besides the actual overhead of the preservation okay. of bodies, they need to be advancing their technologies, That's research, right. and development constantly. That's right. Okay. The other half is recruiting. Right. So where is this income coming for? If there if, if there's a finite amount of people preserved, where is all this income coming from that's keeping them making the advancements that are needed? Are they are they Oof. glomming on to maybe they're not fighting this fight alone? Is this is this, Oh, they are definitely not fighting this. I'm sure I'm so this sure is a, NASA's working on cryogenics and stuff. So like there that. are yeah, but those I mean, I'm sure like there's patents involved and stuff like that. Well, NASA I have no information about this, but NASA is not allowed to have any patents. If anything that they create is instantly public domain. Oh, ah, yeah. that's, 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 that's knowledge right there. I didn't know it's that. It's good and bad 
because one, it's good because it's to the benefit of society, Velcro. Uh, but it's not good in that if they were allowed to hold patents, they could fund themselves for fucking, they, they would not be on the funded. Right. They would be, they have billions. Right. Billions. Right. So it's a bit of a, so I mean, yeah. If you, I mean, like, if you're working in alcohol, you got to go around. I mean, what if they wouldn't wonder if that's like how they have people like life insurance people, where they get their hooks in you and they're like they're trying to sway you to come to their side. They have to. Out of thousand sixty six members, they're not doing that great. Right. The numbers are weak. I mean, what? Okay. I don't even know if they can go up to seven billion on my calculator, but what percentage of one thousand? <laughs> what percentage of one thousand sixty-six out of seven billion? What's that percentage? Let's see. No, I don't. Know. So I go seven billion. What's billion? This is billion, right? That's seven billion. That's seven billion. Okay, so I got to go with thousand, one thousand sixty-six divided by seven billion equals. Oh, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That looks a, like Einstein. There's literally an E in the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, what's that mean? <laughs> Wait, that's how you do it. You divide 1,066 by 7 billion. There's just no way to figure that out on a, on a phone, is there? No, because the answer this is giving me doesn't make any sense. 1.522857144E minus 7. That's above my pay grade. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a very small number. But like honestly, I feel like if I went door to door, yeah, and I was all my efforts, that was my job, eight hours a day. Don't you feel like you recruit in a year, maybe at least a couple dozen people? You would think. So if I have they, they must they must be a small operation. I think we gotta get these answers, man. Where is their, where is their Who facilities? is funding them, though? Who is funding them? Do, private donations? No, but think about this. If there were but private who's donations. Who's going to do private donations? Right, because they, if, they're not, if they're not interested in it, why are they paying? Right. It just doesn't, I just don't get the business model. How, how does Alcor make Oh, I want to know who, who was money. the first person. To ever get cryogenically frozen. Who's that pioneer? You would think it would be the owner. Okay, well, they make a claim on the policy. So I don't know. When Maybe did- they take that money. They invest it. I don't know. No, nah, you can't play with money like that. But that's not what rich people do? Yeah, but they're a, they're a business. They're a corporation. They're not, they're not investing other people's money. Because that's potential. You have potential for loss. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> they're going go, to like fucking write in like a, a, a mass email to 144 people's families being like, oh, we went belly up on that last investment. Uh, we, need, uh, we need to talk to somebody from Alcor. We're going to get Alcor on the, on the phone. I, I got to be honest. Okay, ready? You get preserved. Yeah. Something happens. Three, let's say 200 years from now. Okay. Okay. Twenty two sixteen. Got it. You get brought back. Got it. You got your faculties. I'm back. Let, let you, let's just say you're back in the way you are right now. Okay. Let's just throw all the everything out the window just right. to keep a, a keep consistency. It keep right. it simple, right? No one you know did it. Okay. And also the world is 200 years and more in the future. Sure. So things that you have to wrap your mind around and probably – even be explained All right. are happening. Do you receive that? Let's say you're cognizant that you will cry genuinely frozen. Yeah. And you remember it's that me. you might be woken up one day. Got it. Right? So are you like, okay, okay. Are you like immediately like crack your knuckles and be like, holy shit, let me consume this information. Let me be in, in wonderment about the world around me. Let me get informed. I'm thriving on this type of knowledge and that this success of what I plan. Or are you immediately like, fucking kill me. Like nobody I know is alive. No one in my family. This is weird. I wasn't ready for this. People are like floating around in pods and right. talking without speaking out loud. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> <laughs> Like, don't make my favorite cereal anymore. Right, Whatever it is, like right. you know what I mean. Like, what do you, what do you, what do you, which way you think you're going there? Oh, 
They said people are very like open minded and intelligent and hopeful for a brighter future. Yeah, I don't give a shit. You can't tell me what they're gonna feel when they get unfrozen. No, I, th- I think there's definitely a shock and adjustment. Without but is it a shock that immediately, like almost even like biologically, like kind of affects you in a way that you start producing like a chemical that just like fucking <laughs> just depression or something? I don't even know. Like, you know well, I mean? yeah, like, well, my body just does that when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how that's any different from fucking. But I don't know, man. I think there's. A, I think if you have an adventurous spirit, there's a part of you that's look. Let's talk about when. When are we getting frozen? Most likely towards the end of our lives. Right. So we will have seen a number of our family and friends, unfortunately, already die. You know what I mean? It's right. not like today they're freezing me. And well, the I- thing to do would be to sign up for this shit now. And God forbid you have an untimely demise. Yeah. Then you're being brought back at the age of 43 or whatever the fuck it is. But I think the idea is that they're going to be able to restore you to whatever you want no matter what. That's what they're saying. Age is going to be defeated. They get that body back moving again, then they can just fucking. I think about that mind f though. Yeah, you have your memory. Mm. Your, I mean, I'm sure this has been in a dozen movies already, but I'm just saying it's the first time I'm contemplating it based on my life. Right. You have your memory of everything mm-hmm. and a 100 percent different physical body. Well, I'm hoping they make it look like me. How about this? What if they put you into a fucking kid that's five years old? Now you have forty. 40- 80 years worth of knowledge and memories in a five-year-old kid? That's, that's weird. That's weird. That is weird. Because who is going to – who's going to – who am I going to have sex with at right. that age? It, I mean, we have to be describing 50 different movies right now, right? If not, then – Vanilla Hollywood Sky, Benjamin us. Button. I don't know what. But. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think if you have an adventurous spirit, the part of you is just like, let's see what's going on out there. You know? Let's go visit – Let's see what New Orleans looks so, like today. What, so what? They clone you and then you come back as your younger self? Yes. Or they clone you and you come back as the body that you passed away in, but at that time. Right. Can they give me abs? I believe they can give you abs. What if they put you in a body that's not yours and you don't like the way you look? I th- got to think of their playing this isn't fast the men's and loose with bodies. <laughs> <laughs> they made no promises there. Yeah, I think if, I think if they're playing fast and loose with bodies, it's not going to be a hard thing to get to get another body or facial reconstruction or something. I want my body though. Yeah. It's not great, but it's mine. Yeah, you, know? you want yours back. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Unless you just or get a, a clone su- of mine, a fa- a, a, like a f- way superior body. They can't yeah. just put you. They can't just put you in a body that already has muscles and is jacked and has like a. You know, well, you like, don't know. You don't know. The whole point is you don't know what they can do. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So if they put you, oh my god, what if they put you in a woman's body? Oh, I think this is what happened with Ted Williams. No, in Ted, we got to go back and listen to this yeah. episode. What we said in Ted Williams was they brought him back, sewed his head onto a super hot body. And could you put a bag over the head and have sex with that body? The body, right. Right. That was what we were saying. Right. We're, I'm saying you're you're completely in a female body. What about that? Think about that. This has to be a movie. I don't know. All of me? Big? I don't know. Something. Vice versa? None of those. Freaky Friday? Exactly. Maximum. I don't really know. But yeah. you, 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 uh, Tootsie? I don't know. You, you look, so you, <laughs> you, but you, you're a female with a man, a man's mind. Yeah. You'd be some catch. And I don't, yeah, you what would. I, what I didn't mean, I didn't mean that by like, no, no. <laughs> totally, I, I totally, you know what you meant. No, no, I totally didn't mean that like with a male, with a male mind, meaning like more intelligent. No, you just mean compatibility. Compatibility. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like a, to a guy. Yeah. You'd be a catch because you'd ah. be a girl, but you'd have, be right. one of the guys. That's what I meant. Right, right, right. I didn't mean anything but that. Right. Yeah. Well, I got what you meant. Thanks. But we have a shorthand. We've been together yes, a long yes, time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, wow. All fascinating things. Man. It, it really makes me think because I got to be honest. Yeah. That alternative kind of – there's like this little asterisk of hope. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I think that that to me is even more appealing than being burnt. <laughs> right. You know? Like I, I just don't want to be set ablaze. I'd rather be like, all right – He's gone for now, probably. Right. But also your body's preserved. Right. It's not rotting and it's not no. burnt to ashes. Yeah. I mean, for 200 k but that's coming off a life insurance policy. You're really not even paying that money. You're really not even paying that money. Right. Yeah. But how do they get to you? 
It said in there, it said ideally it's within two minutes, but it shouldn't be more more than 15 minutes. So, I don't know. Are there Alcor cells? <laughs> I, think, <laughs> yeah. I, I think that like they're like the end is near. You get Alcor here and they stay in a hotel. Yeah, but do you know the odds of that? That's crazy. I mean, you, maybe- some people are like, oh, yeah, he's got, he's got a week to live. He lives in those six right. months. You know, he should be, he should pass away tonight. He lives another fucking two well, years. Well, that's why the, the argument is that you should be allowed to basically euthanize yourself in Alcor's lab. Like, if you're that close to death, you, you, mm. you're at the end. Mm. You take a trip to Phoenix, wherever they are. Uh, you, you get into their lab. They put you down. No big loss. You only had another week to live at the most anyway. Right. But you're in their lab, ready to go. Right. But the law is saying that you can't do that. But what about the illnesses you're dying of? Well, you got to figure they're just going to cure those. You know. Okay. So what if the resuscitation of cryopreserved people happens before the solution to the, the disease cancer. that they passed on. I think they just keep you in the they keep you in, in lockdown. Oh god! So the other hundred and forty three people are jumping out, and I, they have they don't they didn't figure out what smallpox, so I got to stay in there. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know. It doesn't matter to you. What difference does it matter to you whether you wake up in twenty two hundred? Well, I mean, more? everyone else knows. <laughs> they don't give a shit, dude. They don't care. You're but no better than the that future. Fish in that des- the future they're describing yeah. is a future where everyone lives forever. How is that possible? Well, I think at that point we're also expanded into other possible universes, let alone planets. And this is all going to happen before we all implode? I don't know, buddy. I if I had you, these answers, I wouldn't be doing a podcast in your kitchen. I got to say, I was taking a shower yesterday. Okay. And I, every once in a while, I start thinking about the universe. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. Like, it doesn't cross your mind. Everyone gets yeah. caught up with their dailies. But yeah. every once in a while, I start thinking about it. And brain can't even wrap around it. My brain cannot no. even wrap around it. No. And it's unbelievable that we, not only are we expected to, but we have no choice to, and we do go about our business every single day, not knowing, knowing nothing. anything. Nothing. Anything. And everything that you know could be wrong. Yes. We we see third we're dimensionally. Just literally like we're like worker ants ourselves. There could be there could be ten dimensions right. that we can't even fucking perceive. Right. That's insane. Yes. But yet you can't you think, think about, about what we've what we've I mean, we did not smoke weed right now, just so you know. Right. <laughs> but you think of and what we what we've accomplished within the confines of what we know is astounding as well. Right. I just, I just, I, you know, and I'm taking a shower and right. I'm thinking of this thing. And then I get, like, I start to get, I don't get, like, filled with, I get very, very, de- like, weird and sullen. Yeah. Because it, it just feels like, ugh, like, it, it, it just kind of strips away everything. Yeah. You know, it makes you feel like, you know. I'll, t- I'll give you another depressing thought. Yeah. What if this is all there is? <laughs> like. You need to say that. <laughs> like, what if this is it? What if this is it? Like there is no fourth dimension. Like, this is the there first. All no, all, there are no alternate universes or planets. What if uh, somehow life we on are the, the fucking only, the only, just? I'm not which even is, talking it's about actually that. impossible. But. I'm not even talking about that. Right, I'm right. just talking about what if there are no great mysteries? There's right. no clockwork behind the universe that we don't understand. There's no. Well, would, would, would that be would that be comforting? I don't know, man. You're taking away a lot of people's faith. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? Right. And hope and, and stuff like that. Oh, you're talking about spirituality? Well, everything. That's what I'm saying. Uh, like, like, oh, it's, it's mind blowing. It's, it's, what I got yeah. This is, it, it, it's, I swear to God, this is literally like we were, we're in college <laughs> and smoked weed. <laughs> and we're just like, I believe in like, I don't believe in God, but I believe in something, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, listen, I got I got really got some here. existential uh, shit going on here today. Yeah, we did. We've been going over an hour. All right, I gotta get. I gotta get home. Right. I got Assassin's Creed Syndicate to play. Fair I enough. Got some shit going on, but there was something I wanted to say. <sighs> I'm going to see Bruce Willis tomorrow in Misery. Oh, I saw it. I know you told me it was terrible, and I couldn't believe it. Oh, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. I couldn't believe it. And then I said to you, "Is it terrible? All right, fine, I'll accept that." Yeah, but he is it great? To, is it great? That's right. That's right. That's the the play's not terrible. Right. 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 
And she's awesome, right? She's awesome. The set design's amazing. That's what I heard too. Yeah. yeah. So, but then I said to you, well, is it at least then, because I paid so much money for these tickets, yeah. is it at least fun to watch him be terrible? And you said no. Right. That's right. That's right. So I went on and I Googled all the reviews from all the major publications and websites. They agree with me. And 100% yeah. are in unity with 100% of what you said. Yeah. That she's awesome. The set design's awesome. They said the play is not scary at all. No. There's, there's the they littlest, almost made like a comedy version. Yeah. yeah. He said, they said there's, it's comedic, a little more com- lighthearted. Yeah. They said there's tension in such a small part of it only, which is horrible because the first mi- – the misery in the movie – and I heard the book, Steve. I didn't read the book, but I heard it's even more. But the movie was fucking terrifying to me. The book is the, s- the first or second. They're both – either even Pet Cemetery or Misery. Both of those books I read in one night. Could not put them down. I sat up for 13 hours straight and just read books. Wow. Like Pet Cemetery and Misery, those two books. Wow. It's fucking unbelievable. Yeah. And in the book, she doesn't break his leg with a hammer. She she cuts it off and then takes a, a, a blowtorch and burns it and burns the stump. Oh it's fucking crazy. God. It's crazy. So, yeah, it's not good. They, there is – there is – you're going to get your money's worth in that you're sitting there Watching looking at John McClane. Right. That's what you're gonna. That's exactly what the reviews say. That's it. They say, but he's. It's just lazy. They say he doesn't. He doesn't know the lines. He's got an earpiece. Yeah. They say he doesn't show fear. He has like like the action hero smirk and and coolness the whole time. From the first line, you already know what you're in for. His first line is awful, and it just doesn't get better from that. Still here, and I hear he's a horrible, horrible human being in real life. I've never met anybody that he, met Bruce. Keeps coming up, right? That keeps coming up. That he's just a fucking. I've heard piece nothing of outside shit. of Kevin Smith's tales. Well, I've I've heard, I've heard from other people, like just a range of people, and they're just like he's just a horrible human being. Why is that? Despite that. I still love Bruce Willis. In it. He's John McClane. What are you so gonna do? So likable as John McClane and as as and moonlighting. Yeah. But uh, what do you think? You want to do a um, some time in uh, in uh, the middle of this year? You want to do a live what say? Yeah, in man. New York. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure, hundred percent. And as well as um, April seventeenth. Uh, sorry, April two thousand seventeen, April two thousand eighteen. Oh no, no, April two thousand seventeen, April two thousand nineteen, yeah. and April two thousand twenty one. Okay. Which just announced Fast and Furious 8, 9, and 10. Oh, so we got a lot. Oh, you know what? We got to do Tokyo Drift. <laughs> and, uh, Why don't we do, do Tokyo Drift? Too? And next week, next episode, I have a surprise for you. For me? Yes. But yeah. that is not a fish uh, coffin. We should do uh, – yeah, we should – we'll plan a live what say you for sure. All right. We'll get Dexter on that. All right. Let me get out of here. All righty. Um, thank you guys for listening. If yeah. anyone knows anyone who knows anyone who works at Alcor – Yeah. Reach out to us. Oh, you know what I'd like to do too? Let's, uh, if there are any uh, listeners out there who want to take a stab at designing a What Say You t shirt, I think we should A, pay attention to the fact that we even have a, a store. Yeah. Um, well, why don't we update our merch? That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, why yeah. don't we take some steps to do it? We'll take this offline. But, uh, we're back. We're, you know, this is our fourth week in a row. Yeah. We'll be back next week because we're on the road next weekend. Yes. We're going to, we're going to make the effort on that. Uh, Anything you want to say before we go? Go to the com for our shows. Yeah, we uh oh, we have podcast shows coming up. That's important. I, I mentioned in the last podcast, but uh we have ten of them coming up in the next month or month right. or oh, two months. And they're like I said, they're just in small venues in the city and in Brooklyn, maybe a couple hundred people. And we get up there and just sh- throw shit against the wall and see what sticks. It's like kind of fun that way. It's a little, it's pretty irreverent. We just like talk about anything we want and see what sticks for the new tour. So come see us at those. They're almost sold out, but there's still some seats left. And that's a good chance to see us like really intimate because, you know, usually we were in the larger theaters and it's not the same feel. And we just shoot from the hip. That's great. That's it. And then all of our other dates for the tour are on sale right now. We're going to Toledo and 
and Grand Rapids, I believe, and Syracuse and Rochester and London, which is sold out. But yeah. we're excited you for see London. The fucking London tickets are going for eight hundred bucks. Don't buy those, guys. Yeah, don't buy them. We will be back. We will be back. We will do a longer before the end of this year. We'll be back. We'll be back. We will be do a longer, more proper tour. More seats available at right. regular fifty dollar prices. When you guys see these tickets on sale for two, three, four, five, six. 800, which I didn't see. Yeah, Declan sent it to me. It's absurd. That's someone literally raping you for money. They're just reselling it. That's not us. Our tickets are $49. So uh, unless you have tons of cash and you want to make someone else rich, just wait. We'll come back. We're going to get to all of you guys. So uh, that's really it. All right, guys. Thank you. We We will be back next week. That's right. All right. I heard that Rome wasn't built in a day Then how come everyone is rushing to get ahead And if I seem to be reserved, that's just my way Your questions seem like you're interrogating me Yeah, I try Then again, I don't try I get an F for effort I get a D next time Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh I heard the lemon metaphor four million times And I don't stand for lemonade, don't ask me why And would a beverage stand be a job that be desired? And where would I get the wood and should I try? Should I try? Then again I don't try I get an F for effort I get a 65 yeah, I try, yeah, 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 then again, I don't try, I get an F for effort, I might as well just... Uh-huh, uh-huh. The currency don't grow like leaves on trees Then how come my money comes and goes so seasonally And I wish farmers planted plants instead of thieves My friend pays a ton of green for greener groceries Yeah, she tries Then again, she don't try She gets an F for effort She'll plant a tree next time Yeah, she tries then again, I don't try. I get an F for effort. I get a D next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I try. Then again, I don't try. I get an F for effort. I get a 65. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I try. Then again, I don't try. I get an F for effort. I might as well just die. Next message. I guess it. This is now for you. Please call me what you say, not have hit. End of message.